to build the escape vehicle with which the rat can flee the sinking ship. They chose to launch their spacecraft on the first anniversary of my lecture tour about the importance of returning to the moon. June 21st, 2004. Exactly one year after they saw my presentation about the moon landings. The Rock Prophecy website timeline for June 21st, 2004 describes how Paul Allen's spacecraft is inspired by Rock Prophecy and built as an escape vehicle to get him safely to the space station before the rock hits. In fall of 2004, Paul Allen waited until the giant asteroid Teutatis made a near-miss pass of the Earth. When that rock was at its nearest position to the Earth, he launched his escape rocket again. Everybody noticed the coincidence on Tuesday that the asteroid came on the other side of the moon. And they knew that asteroid was coming. All the scientists were coming. That was a couple days ago, right? So Paul Allen did the same to Spaceship One up on the same day. The X Prize. Then PBS has the Origins TV show about asteroids and comets. That Spaceship One isn't about, it's not about people. Going up, it's his personal estate. That's what they're trying to say. It's a personal estate on the asteroid. And they thought about that. It's called Earth Looms. Three years later, my insight that this spacecraft is actually an escape vehicle gets mentioned for the first time by mainstream media in November of 2007. Peter Diamandis trained as a medical doctor, but now he has his hands in a bunch of space-related businesses, and he founded the XPRIZE Foundation. Yeah, but I think the message here is clear. The world is doomed, and the sooner Peter Diamandis builds a rocket so we can all leave, the better. I mean, you wouldn't leave if you had the chance? Oh, yeah. The missile shield and moon base are really for the asteroid threat, and Spaceship One is an escape vehicle from impact disaster. These are each my insights that have now been repeated by mass media. So I'm not alone in saying this, but I am the first to recognize it because my book instigated each of these projects. The Missile Shield. I think the Bush administration ought to get that Missile Defense Shield up and running That's and make sure it can thinking. handle the uh, asteroid. Because the asteroid is a real threat. It's not about missiles, it was always about asteroids. They make it look like it's about missiles. The moon base. The degree of certitude increases. I think we ought to uh, start looking for a lunar base. Well, I think you know a lunar base? Yeah. And Spaceship One, all instigated by rock prophecy. I think the message here is clear. The world is doomed, and the sooner Peter Diamandis builds a rocket so we can all leave, the better. Yeah, spaceship One is not about, it's not about people going up. It's his personal escape. More evidence for our world being doomed is found in the name for NASA's Moon Base Project. In 2004, the Space Agency announced that their mad dash to the moon is called the Constellation Program. Here's where they got that title. It's the Constellation. Look at that. She may have been wrecked by whatever destroyed these solar systems. Park, full evaluation of the damage to the constellations. Looks very much like Commodore Decker's planet killer. Doomsday Machine is about a planet killer that gets destroyed by a starship named Constellation. When Bush learned about my moon base lectures in 2003, he had NASA create the Constellation program in 2004, a rush to put a permanent colony on the moon by the year 2020 build luxury lunar condos for a few billionaires to flee Earth's asteroid impact disaster. So NASA named their escape scheme after the starship Constellation, 
from Star Trek's Doomsday Machine episode, where the constellation saves the planets, just like they plan their constellation program to save a few billionaires from the planet killer asteroid. On November 17, 2007, Fox TV aired back to back the asteroid movie Armageddon with Star Trek's Doomsday Machine episode featuring the starship Constellation. Rupert Murdoch's Fox TV is conditioning viewers by coupling the Armageddon Doomsday Machine metaphor with NASA's Constellation program. Merging these images in the minds of viewers is the purpose of airing these shows back to back. But NASA is engaged in a lethal scheme because to pay for it, masses of people are going to perish. There are about 77 million baby boomers, and experts say that in the coming years they could all but drown the economy in debt. A staggering 77 million baby boomers will begin cashing in on Social Security over the next 20 years, leaving it with a long-term shortfall of about $15 trillion. And if that's not scary enough, there's an even bigger threat on the horizon, Medicare. Experts say the glut of boomers plus skyrocketing medical costs will saddle future generations with seven to eight times more debt than Social Security. So you've got two things working together that create this kind of tsunami that's coming at us. The moon allows us to possibly do a lot of science that you could not do on the surface of the Earth, for example, telescopes and to do astronomy. But in terms of it being an endeavor that the American people and possibly other nations are going to be asked to spend billions of dollars, I do think NASA, and they're working on this, but I do think NASA has to come up with um, some crisper answers, ones that just don't reach to one part of the populace, mm -hmm. but to young people as well as your, your Joe Six Pack, to people who are retired and wondering who's going to be paying their medical bills. I think NASA really needs to focus yeah. on that why. Establish a four-person outpost on the moon. Within 20 years, moon colonists will harness solar power to sustain the station. Price tag, $230 billion for our national mooning. Question. <laughs> Is it in our national interest to have moonlings in a permanent base on the moon? Mort. You know, uh, for $230 billion, I would say no. You can't, you, can't, can, you can't separate it from the cost. We've got so many other needs that are, in my judgment, ahead of that that I wouldn't do it. Combine this problem with the intense global competition for oil, rising food and fuel costs, and impending massive expenses to attempt a slowdown of global warming, and you have a climax of what rock prophecy calls retarded history, a checkmate situation of depleted options as the asteroid looms into view and humans discover that these ages in pursuit of privilege at equality's expense now leaves us all defenseless against the rock. Seers like Jimmy and people like me who understood the biggest picture were mercilessly persecuted by savages of the first century. And as these creatures reach their predestined rendezvous with impact, we'll see elaborate plans for genocide as the unjust moneyed among us rush to save themselves at our expense. Where your tax dollars pay for the shuttle, the space station, and out of this world parties. Tight at another government agency as NASA officials wait for Congress to pass a new spending plan, the agency's supporters warn the budget crunch could delay future space projects. Yet NASA always seems to find money for parties that are quite simply out of this world. And the costs are astronomical, which is why just like